Welcome back to the latest environmental news update. First story. In March of 2014, China's premier Li Keqiang announced to the National People's Congress that the nation was declaring a quote-unquote war on pollution. Now, four years later, data shows that China is winning at a record pace. Cities have cut concentrations of fine particulates in the air by 32% on average. How did this happen? A National Air Quality Action Plan required all urban areas to reduce concentrations of fine particulate matter pollution by at least 10%. To reach these targets, China banned new coal-fired power plants in the most polluted regions. The Beijing area was required to reduce pollution by 25% with the remarkable $120 billion budget for that purpose. This isn't without cost, though. Some actions, such as removing coal boilers from homes and businesses, left some residents without heat this winter. According to the New York Times, it would be quite a twist if China ultimately wins the war against pollution by embracing market-based regulations, while the United States continues to use them only intermittently. Several months ago, I covered a study that found plastic fibers in tap water. Now, the situation seems to have gotten worse. A recent analysis of some of the world's most popular bottled water brands found that more than 90% contain tiny pieces of plastic. In response, the World Health Organization has launched a health review into the potential risks of drinking this contaminated water. 259 bottles from 11 different brands spanning 9 countries found an average of 325 plastic particles for every liter of water being sold. In one bottle of Nestle Pure Life, Concentrations were as high as 10,000 plastic pieces per liter of water. The most common type of plastic found was polypropylene, which is actually the same type of plastic used to make bottle caps. The study hasn't been published in a journal yet, but the WHO said it would review the evidence in order to establish a research agenda. Dozens of bird species across the French countryside have experienced a decline in population many by two-thirds, in what has been called a catastrophic situation. According to researchers, the primary culprit is the excessive use of pesticides on monoculture crops such as wheat and corn. This pesticide isn't poisoning the birds directly, though. Rather, it's killing off the insects that the birds depend on for food. Once ubiquitous bird species that have fallen by a third include the common whitethroat, the Ortolan bunting, and the Eurasian skylark. A migratory songbird, the meadow pipit, has declined by nearly 70%. Despite a government plan to cut pesticide use in half by 2020, sales in France have only gone up. According to the National Center for Scientific Research, our countryside is in the process of becoming a veritable desert. Last year saw a record number of endangered North Atlantic right whales being killed by fishing gear entanglements. Now, Maine's lobster industry may have to change in order to protect these whales. According to Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution scientist Mark Baumgartner, in order to help the whales survive, the rope Maine lobstermen use to mark their traps with buoys and bring in lobster catch must be modified or even eliminated. In response, the Maine lobstermen feel they're being singled out for an international problem. Only five calves were born last year, while there were 17 deaths caused by rope and gear entanglement or ship strikes. Scientists are currently proposing new modifications, such as weaker ropes or even ropeless technology that relies on radio signals to locate traps. Norway is already at the forefront of launching electric vehicles, and now it wants to decarbonize the world's shipping fleet. Other nations, including Finland, the Netherlands, China, Denmark, and Sweden, are following closely. The MS Ampere is one of the first modern electric-powered commercial ships that has been in use in Norway since 2015, and several Norwegian companies have teamed up to build a coastal all-electric container ship that could eliminate 40,000 diesel truck trips per year. This trend has also begun elsewhere in Europe. Late last year, Finland launched its first electric car ferry, and this summer, the Dutch company Portliner will unveil five all-electric, emissions-free barges. International shipping accounts for 3% of the world's carbon emissions, but switching the shipping industry's energy source to renewables is no easy task. International regulations and incentives on converting the shipping industry to renewable energy would speed up the progress. That's all for this week's report. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a like and subscribe for more. 
Remember to keep spreading environmental awareness. See you next week.